Hi Church family, great to be with you. Thanks for taking the time just to listen to this. Bit of a reflection really, this Sunday just gone, the trustees shared a whole load of stuff um, about our church life. And, and I love the fact there was someone visiting, not from a church background, uh, and you could feel a bit like, oh no, you know, we're talking all like bits and pieces. And yet they loved hearing something of what church is really about, that it's not just a place where we sing songs or have a cup of coffee together but it's actually a place where we reach out to change and transform the world and and just really to say um, I'm going to try and touch on a few other bits we weren't able to touch on yesterday but there are so many people um, doing so much and just thank you and we want to celebrate really and cheer each other on and can I ask as we talk uh, and as we look to the future as we grapple we're aware there's a whole bunch of stuff that we don't do there's loads of things we could be doing or we could do better or um and yet can we bring a heart of blessing into all those things can we bring love and life and encouragement into all those things you know blessing i believe is what we are dipping our toes into As my mum stood at the beginning of last year and said, this is just the beginning, I've then, I don't know if you have, I've thought, what is it the beginning of, you know, and tried to understand something the last couple of years. What is the the beginning of? I I think one of the clear things we've seen is people coming to faith. Uh, But I believe actually under all of that, actually, it's the beginning of a new sense and grasping and walking in the blessing and favour of God. I love if you read Genesis, you just see all the time, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, blessing, 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 messy people, just like you or me, messy church in a sense, just like we've got, and yet God wanted to bless. And I love the fact that it brings to a place where actually Jacob goes down to Egypt, Israel um, goes to Egypt and blesses Pharaoh, the most powerful person on the planet. God is releasing blessing. And so that's what we're about. So firstly, can I just bless our trustees? We celebrated a few weeks ago, Janet, who has served for seven years, I think, as a trustee. And I know many other people have uh, in the past stepped up and really served in that role. But yesterday we heard from Joe and we heard from Paul and we heard uh, from Richard. uh, And we just want to just say thank you to them. You know, it's not an easy task. And as Joe shared yesterday, there's a real um, tension between what the world wants from us and what God and the Bible want from us. Uh, and, and, And we put a lot of time in to try and navigate that stuff really well. And so just want to say thank you to them. You know, I I spend lots of time with Joe uh, and we grapple with stuff and we talk through things and we're trying to land stuff and work things out. Uh, Can I just big up our safeguarding? You know, when I started in the ambulance service, we actually did a whole session on how do you cover your backside? They use maybe a term that wasn't quite as nice as that. But safeguarding potentially in the world it is a fear-driven exercise and when you're in it you're just trying to cover yourself whereas I can authentically say that our safeguarding is about loving people brilliantly and that we walk I think amazingly through Paul and John building on the foundations of people like Val and others and Graham who've done stuff in the past uh, of being law-abiding Um, connected into all the things we need to do and yet at the same time not merely just stopping there but then letting holiness and letting kindness and let the grace and mercy of God come through I feel incredibly safe and as Paul challenged all of us you know safeguarding is something for all of us what we want is that in everything we're doing that there's a safe environment and it's not just for the vulnerable because in the end we're all vulnerable in many fronts aren't we and we want to create a safe environment where it's safe for people to minister as well as for people to be ministered to where it's a safe place for people to encounter God Uh, and so we can all be a part of that so just want to really thank 
Paul and John especially, um, just for all they do there. And the number of times, you know, I'm able just to phone them or message through and just say, we've got this, what would you? And, and just always get back fantastic, um, brilliant um, advice uh, and um, just a thorough, deep support, which is just wonderful. Uh, and then to just uh, encourage us, you know, uh, Richard talked about finances. Do you know, it's been 43 years. And if we're going to celebrate anything, can we celebrate this? This church has existed for 43 years. And as Rich pointed out on Sunday, um, we don't get any funding from any bigger sources. We're not part of a denomination or anything like that. Um, it, we're all, it's all from within what we believe for and trust for and, uh, and, and, and sacrifice for. And for 43 years, you know, churches like ours survive on offerings and we don't have weekly offerings. I've shared it before, I'll share it again. One of the things that uh, attracted me to this church was their faith stance in terms of finance. The giving is between you and God. It's not my job or the trustee's job to bang a pot and tell everyone to give. I want to encourage you to give because I want you to walk in the blessing of God. Uh, the releasing finance and from holding it and saying, this is all I've got. As we give in faith, God will bless us and God will walk, walk us through and we'll see miracles happen. But that's something I want for you. I want you to be blessed, not so our coffers are filled. Um, with coppers. Um, and, and, and I just love the fact that for 43 years, we haven't had offerings. Yeah, we have occasional gift days, but we don't bang on about finance. And God, up to today, has always provided and provided above and beyond. Um, we're not scraping the barrel or not able to do this thing or that because of finance. Just leading into then, I know building has been something specifically probably the last 18 months we've really been praying into and I think we fed back before but we met over the summer a whole bigger group of us really just to go okay God what are you saying where were we at and we really felt um, God's got it he's leading us we still need to just be knocking on doors so there's people like myself and Paul and some others who are just making sure we're knocking all the right doors but when it happens God will open the way and one of the beautiful things coming back into blessing has been actually our collaboration with Warnford. And we've just been felt really challenged last year and this year to bless the school. We, we recognise being in education in this climate is hard and, and we can easily end up, and I have, in the place where I'm frustrated at Warnford and frustrated at all the bits that maybe aren't or aren't great. And instead, actually, we've chosen to go for blessing. And so just recently, um, we were able to collaborate with the school around the main hall. Um, as I mentioned, Mike's built an incredible uh, desk that then the school is saying we can use their new PA. Um, we can use their new sound desk and lighting desk and these things, which are going to save us in terms of setup, which is wonderful. They've um, put in... I don't know the right term, but special lines that come from the front to the back that mean basically you can plug in at the back and things like their projector we can use and, and other stuff. And just there's been a real openness of heart. Why? Because we bless the school. We bless the school in prayer. And last year we gave them a gift, a financial gift to bless them. And it opens up people's hearts. And it's just been wonderful. Um, we were able to put a bid in. Um, with a, a local trust uh, and to get then finance um, just the last couple of weeks so that Warnford can buy some new lights. Um, and actually that means in terms of how we create a, a, an environment in the hall that looks professional in the right sense, uh, is a nice place to be, doesn't look like a school, um, looks like somewhere you want to be, um, we're able to do that, which is amazing. So just be encouraged in terms of that. One of the things uh, Joe uh, mentioned on Sunday was about our support for those abroad and beyond. Um, and um, specifically just now, um, here's a little video from Natalie, who's in Mexico, and from uh, Molly and Steve, who are in Cambodia. Hi guys, Natalie here from Mazatlan, Mexico. 
I just wanted to share a quick update with you about this season and as we head into 2025, the new things that the Lord has in store for me. So as many of you know, I've been out here in Mexico serving full-time now for two and a half years as a full-time missionary. And I have been overseeing our staff services department here, which takes care of things like vacations, insurances, the onboarding and, and exiting process as we have staff join us and as they leave to help them with the transition time. And I also have been part of developing a pastoral care team, which we've been pioneering over the last six months to come alongside our staff here and help them to sustain mind, body and spirit as they serve full time in the mission field. With that being said, I knew that in the summer, the Lord was starting to orchestrate my steps in a new direction. And with that, I was invited by many of the visiting speakers and the school leaders of the discipleship training program here to be a prayer covering and pastoral support. And as many of you know, when I joined YWAM in 2019, I was involved with schools with the discipleship and raising up sons and daughters to go out into the mission field and into full-time ministry. And with that, I'm going to be joining the DTS, the Burning Hearts DTS here in January and staffing that. And hopefully within the next year, also pioneering Crossroads, which is for those that are over the age of 30 at different stages in their life with a bit of life experience, who feel called to full-time missions and ministry. With that, I would just really love to ask for your prayer covering and your support as I step into this new season. Prayers that I would transition well as I move out of staff services and into training full time. And prayers for finances. I really felt as I stepped into this that the Lord was asking me to take a step of faith and really believe for and fundraise for outreach expenses, not only for myself, but for the other five people that will be staffing the DTS with me. So with that, we're looking to raise £18,000. If you would like to be a prayer covering or would like to support me in a more practical way, you can do that in a, in a number of ways. I have a WISE account under the name of Natalie Jane Ketcher, and I also have a PayPal account in the name of Ketching Kona. Thank you so much for all your love, prayers and support for me over the years as I've been in full-time missions. It really means so much and I really love and appreciate you guys and I look forward to seeing you at Christmas. Hi guys! Hi, Hi Wave Church. We miss you. We're sending love from Cambodia. Yeah, we um, just so appreciate you, all your prayers and support and love. Um, we've had a busy season. We've just graduated 29 students from our Iris Harvest School of Missions and it's been amazing seeing God do so, so much. Many salvations, healings. Um, incredible, incredible things. It's been a great eight weeks, but it's been full on. Um, and during that time, we also, God actually showed us a place to, um, on the riverside to rent as a coffee shop and an outreach center. So we've also just recently signed for that and are really excited about developing that. We feel it's gonna be such a beacon of light in that community and it's really another dream fulfilled. So lots of exciting things here. God's really moving in powerful ways and it's just, yeah, just such a privilege to be here. Yeah, amen. And we have the Christmas season ahead, which is always great when we have all the street kids um, that we do parties for and the different mm. communities. So, um, yeah, praying that that goes really well as well. It's a great opportunity to share the good news with you guys. But, yeah, we just wanted to send a video saying we miss you, we love you guys, and we're so thankful for you all. And, um, yeah, we appreciate you greatly. Uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing you soon. Bye. God bless. Thank you guys. So isn't it amazing? Um, people getting healed, people are getting discipled, people getting saved because of our support, which isn't merely financial. There's a lot of prayer, there's a, a lot of connection um, and encouragement that goes on with these and more. People like Danny and Ellie in Glastonbury, we um, have a strong connection with and really cheer on um, in their journey. Uh, you'll be aware that this term we've branched out in interns we'll be hearing more from them in the new year uh, I know there's lots 
um, of stuff always going on. And um, part what, what we were asking for is just, you know, feedback, any questions you have, um, anything you're not too sure about, or you'd love to hear a bit more about. Uh, do do feed those things back. Do just email in, and what we'll do is we just want to collate those. And because probably if you're thinking about something, then there's probably another five or six or seven people who are thinking the same thing. And we want to be, you know, accountable. Um, and we also just want to be open. Like I shared at the beginning, we don't do everything. And there's a hundred million things um, feels like we don't do or could do better or whatever. And if you've ever been in a leadership you know, the potential crushing weight uh, of being utterly aware uh, of all the things that aren't. And it's been my big challenge this year uh, as uh, the as society uh, and, and our world is just so out of control, as there is so much opportunity and so much challenge. My big challenge has been how do I focus on what God is doing, not on what he's not? And how do we carry well all the things that we see? You know, it's my every single minute of the day job, yeah? Um, Of all the things that we could do or should do or want to do. And yet measuring that in terms of the actual resource we have got. Measuring that in terms of what God actually is saying right now. So please do feed that stuff back because it helps us to know what what are people people talking about and helps you feel valued and helps you um, see stuff bigger. So please do ask questions and do feed stuff back um, to us. And just to say in terms of from the trustees point of view, as you're aware, um, Janet has um, stepped down after serving for seven years. Amazing. Uh, so uh, we will in the new year, the trustees will be looking for, for at least another trustee. So if that's something you could be praying about um, uh, and just praying the right person um, is able to step up and um, fulfil that beautiful role that, like Joe said, it, it, it's about landing the vision of the church. It, it, in a sense, it's about taking the prophetic, what God's saying, and helping Jesus work it out. But bless you all. Thank you so much for just all you do. Uh, like I said, there's loads of other people who do great work uh, that we aren't able to mention at this time. Uh, but thank you and God bless you and have a great week. <laughs>